Hi everyone, I'm Natalia from Propi. Uh, I have today with me Nima Wedlake from Thomvest and Michelle Killeran from Omer's Ventures. Two funds, venture capital funds that have a great interest and deep understanding in real estate technology because they also have large real estate organizations behind them and this genuine interest uh, in this space. So welcome everyone today to our weekly webinar. We're starting shortly. Again, we're going live on a numerous social media accounts. Please ask your questions here in Q&A and, and the chat as well as on social media. And today we want to discuss investing in real estate technology during and post COVID-19. There is an increasing pool of capital being invested in real estate technology, and I believe it just starts to take off. We will talk about several specific startups uh, that Michelle and Nima invested in or interested about, and we will discuss who might potentially be disrupted by startups and why is it important for broker owners and realtors to follow the prop tech again prop tech it's a real estate technology it's a uh, term in that and definition that we will use uh, during this webinar um so michelle tell us about yourself why are you investing in prop tech and why do you care about real estate Thanks, Natalia, for having me. Uh, so I work at Omer's Ventures. We're a multi-stage, multi-sector venture fund uh, located in Toronto, Palo Alto, and London. And series A, B, C, so our checks are 5 to 25. And one of the sectors that about a year and a half ago we identified as having a lot of opportunity was the real estate side. Uh, Oxford is the real estate arm of Omer's. So we work with them closely as we're looking at different investment opportunities. Uh, but for us, it's really around how it's a massive market. We've seen a lot of technology emerging to solve some of the problems in the space. And also the uh, consumerization of the asset class we're pretty excited about. Fantastic, thank you. And Michelle, thank you so much for finding the time to join us today. Nima, how about yourself? Where do you invest in besides PropTech and why do you care about real estate technology? Yep, uh, Natalia, thank you for having uh, me as well. Uh, good to be here today. And, um, you know, I, I work for a fund called Tom Vest Ventures and uh, similar to, to Michelle, we have a Canadian heritage. Uh, uh, the fund was, was founded in Toronto and we have offices in San Francisco as well. Uh, and, you know, historically, we, we've spent a lot of time in uh, what I would describe as financial technology broadly. So um, identifying companies that are innovating in uh, both consumer finance, uh, SMB finance, uh, commercial banking broadly, uh, because we saw kind of the writing on the wall uh, about a decade ago, uh, more and more of of our financial lives were moving online. Uh, and we saw technology as a means for for creating more efficiency in those in those markets, and uh, it took a while, but I think uh, in in real estate we're seeing the same phenomenon occur right now. Obviously, a real estate transaction is quite complex, and so um, uh, you know there will always be humans required in the process. We can't automate everything, uh, and and so you know what we're looking for in in prop tech is uh, you know how do we utilize technology to enable. Uh, agents and other stakeholders in the process to uh, to do their jobs more efficiently. Thank you. Thank you so much. As for myself, for the folks that are joining us today for the first time, we're doing this uh, webinars weekly, but as uh, for myself, I'm the founder of Propi. I used to be a real estate developer for many years in Europe, and I moved here in Silicon Valley to de dedicate my career uh, to transaction automation. I strongly believe, and my team strongly believe, that that's the future and we need a fundamental change uh, in the way we do home buying today. Uh, also, uh, those of you um, who have uh, been following our weekly webinars, you might remember that we have already discussed the Silicon Valley market 
Uh, and while the Silicon Valley housing market is moving virtually and affected, especially right now uh, by COVID-19, that doesn't mean that a storm isn't coming. So um, I'll preface uh, this by saying that I'm relatively bullish uh, on the housing market in the US due to the low mortgage rates, the stimulus programs and shortage of the supply. However, uh, we have to think of the result of the COVID-19 long term. Uh, there will be residual negative effects to the economy and you can see the demand side of the equation to decrease uh, if we don't recover from uh, the unemployment struggle. And at the same time, you could see the supply increase as many homeowners will be unable to afford their mortgages anymore as this progresses. So Nima, I know you had publications on this topic. How has the prop tech ecosystem changed in the last three months due to this uncertainty of the housing market? Yeah, very, very good question. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, after a period of, I would say, uh, uncertainty, we uh, uh, in the early innings of, of this pandemic, when shelter-in-place orders were implemented across the U.S. in, in mid-March and, and into April, um, you know, I think we we were really questioning what what the future of, or at least the short-term future of uh, of the real estate market w would be like. You know, there's there's some very obviously tactical uh, issues around. Uh, forcing folks indoors and not being able to go view open homes uh, and uh, and execute transactions, we thought uh, there may be a period of uh, of uh, kind of sustained uh, reductions in demand, also driven by some of the economic uh, consequences you mentioned. Um, you know, but what's been interesting to see though is you know there there obviously was that that initial dip uh, in demand, but we've seen a, a really interesting and dramatic pickup. And you know, I, I think we've we've definitely we definitely view uh, the pandemic as a, a probably a creator of tailwinds uh, for for the residential real estate space in particular. Uh, you know, there are a few interesting uh, trends that that we've seen. One is this uh, kind of uh, as folks have have adapted to a work work from home uh, sort of motion when when they can do so. Um, that's in some ways opened up the aperture of places those people can live, right? And so uh, we may see a migration out of big cities um, into more affordable markets where you know, on a per square foot basis, uh, there's a lot more bang for your buck. Um, and so we're, we're starting to see that in, in some instances. And you know, in San Francisco, for instance, uh, rent prices have dropped in double digits over the last couple months. Um, and really, really kind of dramatic change in a short period of time. Uh, the other, the other piece is, you know, as people are stuck at home, you know, they take a look around their, their, uh, their homes or apartments and they realize, you know, maybe it's time for an upgrade. Maybe I need a home office. Uh, and so I think there, uh, for the folks that can afford it, I think we'll see this interesting, um, spike in transaction volume or demand, uh, driven by, by some of the, the changes, uh, that, that took place as part of this COVID period. Uh, and then, you know, on the back end, there, there's obviously the, the full set of technology companies that are helping a, a enable transactions to occur, even when you can't do things like, you know, like wet signatures for, for, uh, for notary, for instance. Yeah, I agree that basically technology has saved the industry because we could observe if uh, the market would have stopped, maybe there would be like panic sales and it, it would affect uh, the market on micro macroeconomic uh, aspect. Um, yep. Michelle, do you have anything to add or oppose? And uh, what do you think was the change different for commercial and residential real estate? I agree with with Nima on the on the residential side. Uh, I think a lot of this technology existed, and now uh, this pandemic has really spurred some of the adoption around digitizing the transaction. On the commercial side, uh, we spent some time there looking at what's the office of the future look like. And at the beginning, so a few months ago, it was really uh, around companies just adjusting to remote work. And then the conversation shifted to opening the office again. What does that look like? So we saw this shift from short-term solutions around more procedural of how are you going to get people in the elevator? Uh, what type of safety precautions are you going to take around restrooms? And then now the discussion has shifted to more long-term technology solutions. 
And this could be around contact tracing, um, touchless entry everywhere, uh, even something around air filtration and managing and being able to, to track if there's any toxins in the air. Uh, so that's now what building owners and, and landlords and tenants are starting to think about on the commercial side. Uh, what's been interesting from our conversations is what the office looks like is still TBD. Uh, our view is it's going to be a hybrid of work from home plus, plus having an office. Uh, presence and uh, it'll be interesting to see I think a, a new wave of flex office emerge out of this that will be maybe more neighborhood centric. Thank you very very interesting. Okay so now let's get to prop tech uh, trends. As we entered the uh, 2020 these were the uh, the main trends uh, determined by or presented by Paul Levine last year at Inman conference. Uh, but uh, right now we probably would uh, revisit those uh, trends and I would love to hear your opinion. Uh, how would you revisit those? And basically uh, the brokers that are listening to us and, and uh, uh, the, the audience, they are aware of iBuyer model. Um, as well as tech forward brokerage, new business models ar around uh, realtors work. Uh, new financing is a very interesting um, trend that we will discuss today. And obviously the one that I'm most passionate about is the transaction automation. And uh, Paul also uh, uh, presented this idea that the last 15 years was all about the marketplaces like Truly and Zillow really bring the visibility to listings and the market. In the next 15 years, it will be all about the transaction itself and new business model. It's a huge opportunity, $100 billion opportunity. And we're seeing that more and more VCs are interested in prop tech, maybe because of that. So, um, Michelle, what trends are you most excited about prop tech and which of them will impact realtors? lives why should they care one area that we're excited about is around democratizing access to home ownership so making it an option for people to purchase homes that maybe thought they weren't able to enter the market yet so in this alternative financing bucket there's technologies that have emerged around down payment assistance uh, there's a company in there called landed so we recently uh, invested in them. Their uh, down payment assistance focused on teachers and essential workers. Uh, there's other models out there such as rent to own uh, and also any shared co-investment models. Uh, what's fascinating is that in 2019, 32% of first-time home buyers received a gift or a loan from a relative or friend for the down payment. So this, these types of solutions are enabling people to access the market uh, who maybe don't have that savings or access to uh, that type of capital. Uh, so it's just fascinating. I think some of Nima's trends that he mentioned around people maybe who are traditionally renters moving out of the city uh, to and now are able to purchase, I think these types of solutions will enable that trend even further. Thank you. Yeah, it's thank you. And we will actually... Uh... We'll want to learn more about Lended, your, your uh, latest investment. But before going there, Nima, could you please share your opinion on the trends in prop tech? And so I got back to the slide with four major trends. How would you alter that? Yeah, no, I, I think these are, these are spot on. And if you, if you think about how, you know, as, as Paul mentioned in his slide, uh, eye buying is, has, was this really interesting phenomenon that hit the market in a, in a big way in, over the last several years. Um, and uh, what you realize, is, you know, during a period like COVID where there's um, uncertainty in the market, the, the, uh, the entire model kind of erodes a bit. And you've seen companies like Opendoor uh, pivot to a more uh, to more of a hybrid model where they will, they do have the balance sheet to, to acquire homes, but they also will act as a, as a broker uh, in many instances. Uh, and so I think uh, what you're seeing is kind of this, uh, uh, you know, part of the whole venture model is, is testing lots of uh, business models uh, and, and then providing the capital to do so. Uh, but I think ultimately what the, the experiment has run and what we're seeing is that, you know, due to the kind of, uh, 
the, uh, the varied and diverse nature of the housing stock in the US um, and the fact that markets go up and down, uh, I think uh, taking on the risk associated with buying homes in bulk uh, is, is something that I think, uh, I, I think we'll see less of those models in the future. Maybe, maybe Open Door will, will continue as kind of the, the large predominant uh, company in that space. But, but uh, I think uh, uh, you know, we're also seeing a, a power shift to, to the agent. Uh, and so that's where we're spending a lot of, a lot of time is, you know, how do we, um, how do, how does technology enable the agent to uh, increase transaction volume, in, increase certainty of close when they're representing a buyer on a transaction, uh, drive down the cost for, for the buyer or seller um, uh, when, when executing a transaction, give them more visibility into, into pricing and, and uh, the, the full set of costs and risk associated with, with buying or selling a home. Uh, and so, you know, we've, we've made some investments in that category and continue to look for some. So good, good example of that is a company called Blend, uh, which, uh, which uh, works with lenders to digitize the entire mortgage process. Uh, and uh, they've since expanded into uh, some additional areas in, in, uh, in the real estate transaction workflow, like home insurance or, um, or digital closings. And I think what, what they do is, you know, they, they uh, provide a lot more visibility and transparency into what is a very complicated process for a lot of buyers, particularly those that, that, it's, that haven't transacted many times uh, in their lifetimes. You know, this is for most of us going to be the largest purchase we ever make. And, um, and we see technology as, as a, um, as a w means of uh, making that process easier, more efficient. Um, and ultimately more transparent. Uh, and so, so yeah, I mean, I think in general, the, the, the themes that, that Paul outlined in this slide really resonate with us. And we have a, a you know, in addition to blend, we're, we're investors yeah, in another company. Too. Yeah, on, on the slide called Ribbon, uh, which, uh, which uh, again, and seeks to, uh, to enable agents to, uh, to increase transaction volume. Yeah, so several times you mentioned NEMA enabling, empowering realtors and agents. However, uh, broker owners uh, and uh, realtors are a bit nervous about bench capitalists willing to disrupt realtors. And actually a number of those, I think they're buying the idea of disrupting realtors. Uh, so Michelle, what do you think about that? I agree with Nima that they're critical to the transaction. So this is an incredibly emotional purchase that you do not do often, like he mentioned. So having someone there to who knows the industry really well, who has a strong network of who do you use for title? What about your mortgage? Like answering all of those questions. Uh, the close process is complicated um, to have someone guide you through it and also has hyper local information in the markets that they serve is really important. The technology that's emerging to empower the agents will make the agents role change likely in the future of what they do. Uh, maybe their role in the transaction could look a little bit different as some of the more manual processes are digitized, but that human connection is still important in our view as well. Great, yeah. Totally agree with this opinion. And uh, Nima, why do you think realtors need to pay attention to those startups? What is it there for them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. You think about how the 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 role of a realtor has changed over the last decade two decades um and, and even the role of the the brokerage right you know i think you know i think for the longest time having this physical brick and mortar presence in a local market mattered and you know a, a way that that you would prospect for potential clients would be when when folks walked by your your uh your brokerage your brokerage's office and saw the listings on the window and i think that's uh, you know, the, the rise of marketplaces or listings platforms like Zillow and Trulia have really changed the equation. Most, most shopping processes for a home start online now. And so I think it's, it's uh, natural that, that a, a process that starts online will continue in some sort of digital, uh, on, on, across some sort of digital platform. And so I think for agents, it's about especially during this COVID period when, uh, you know, the idea of in-person physical interaction may be, may be uh, limited for, for the foreseeable future. How do you um, nurture leads um, digitally? 
how do you keep in touch uh, with folks using, uh, you know, uh, mobile apps, uh, mobile communication uh, tools? Uh, and then how do you uh, ultimately show homes and, and execute transactions all in a technology enabled way, I think is going to be uh, almost like an existential question for the industry. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, I think the brokers model that, that we've, uh, that we've seen evolve over the last couple of decades may, may evolve in it. And, uh, what you may see is, uh, our companies like compass or side, which, which Paul, who, who created this slide, uh, this slide here invested in, um, rise in prominence as, as being this kind of technology centric, uh, broker that, uh, gets rid of the office, gets rid of the physical presence, but just enables agents uh, with, with best in class technology to get their jobs done efficiently. Yeah, I think it, it's worth uh, mentioning also to explain that Paul Levine uh, used to be a president and the COO of Trulia. Uh, and now he's a venture capitalist here in Silicon Valley as well. So this is why uh, we're with, with interest, we're observing his thoughts on the prop tech. Uh, Michelle, so here, there are few startups uh, that I put together on one slide. Uh, we've discussed many of them in our prep uh, talk or conversations. Uh, it's not uh, like a selection or something, but these are just some examples that I believe uh, could be very beneficial to realtors and to broker owners. And we have one exciting here, which is Lended. And Michelle, you invested there recently and it's very much related to the COVID-19 situation. So can you tell a little bit more about this company and how uh, realtors can benefit uh, from potentially working with them? Sure. So Landed is in the alternative financing bucket. So it provides down payment assistance to teachers and essential workers to purchase a home in exchange for sharing in the change in value of the home over time. Uh, Landed works with a, a network of agents. Uh, they have almost over 200 agents in their network in the markets that they serve. And they're working with school boards as well to kind of talk, uh, connect with the teachers and then offer these types of programs, enabling them to purchase homes in effectively in expensive areas uh, near the schools that they work at. We spent a lot of time last year looking at this alternative financing space. Uh, we think that ultimately people want to own that and that these new models where maybe you're sharing your cap table of your home with the bank and another party are more accepted. And so that was what we were excited about there. And uh, we were just very impressed with the team at Landed and uh, what they've accomplished so far and are excited to, to work with them for their mission going forward as they expand into other areas of essential workers. Thank you. Yeah, and I think it's, it's really important for um, mar the market participants uh, and for home buyers, for sellers, uh, follow those new companies. For example, if an agent has a customer uh, who is a teacher and they want to sell their home, definitely that's the place they need to, to uh, really get to, to learn more. Uh, because this can help uh, realtors to expand their clientele, to expand their uh, channel uh, of lead generation. Uh, Nima, we discussed with you a number of startups. Uh, I think Thomas invested in Lone Snap and Glide out of, of uh, this list here. Can you tell a little bit more how uh, these companies or any others could be beneficial to uh, realtors? Yeah, definitely. We're, we're also investors in, in Ribbon, uh, which, is, which is on the slide here. Um, and so, you know, uh, I would say Glide, I'll, I'll start with. Uh, you know, interesting company focused mostly on the California market right now, although they are in the process of expanding. And what they're doing is they're taking the seller uh, disclosure process and moving it to a, a much more easy to use uh, survey like experience versus the uh, printing or filling out of a PDF form that, that typically occurs uh, when, a, when a seller is preparing a disclosure packet. Um, and they uh it's 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 incredible they they you know what what they've uh, in converting the process from from pdf to a you know a survey like process uh they've quickly scaled uh the business about 20 percent of all uh 
home sales use Glide to complete the disclosure process. Uh, and then they're, uh, they're building several other features uh, through that disclosure creation process um, that, that a seller can, can benefit from, like uh, one click to purchase um, a natural hazard report, one click to purchase uh, disclosure insurance, and they're, they're gonna slowly roll out uh, additional um, uh, products in that marketplace uh, over time. Um, and so agents love it because it's, uh, it's just an, an easier way to, to, uh, to kick off the, uh, the, the uh, listing process with the seller. Uh, Ribbon is, uh, is, it's an interesting tool. So, you know, you think about how uh, competitive some of, some of these markets uh, have become uh, and the, the power that an all cash offer can, can bring in, in increasing your odds of, of winning an offer, uh, especially in a competitive multi-bid uh, situation. And so Ribbon, what they've done is they'll partner with agents um, and then and agents uh, alongside their buyers uh, can, uh, can make an all cash offer on a property. Uh, Ribbon will buy the home on behalf of the buyer. And then, uh, and then once the transaction closes, uh, the buyer will effectively refinance that purchase uh, and, and transition into a 30-year mortgage. And uh, so what that does for the agent and the buyer is increase their odds of, of, uh, of winning a bid. And then for Ribbon, they take a small fee uh, as, as, a, as an enabler of the transaction. Uh, and then, uh, and, and so agents love it. It's a, it's a tool that, that, uh, just, you know, increases transaction throughput, which is the theme I, I, I talked about earlier. Uh, so, so, uh, again, it f fit very well into our thesis of tools to empower the agent. Uh, and then finally loan snap, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time thinking about, um, financial transactions and, and obviously, um, uh, the universe of lenders is, is pretty vast. But uh, there's a lot of variation in their, in their ability to utilize technology to drive down the cost of originating a mortgage. And uh, LoanSnap is interesting. They are an engineering team uh, based in, tech, uh, in San Francisco uh, that married a, uh, a mortgage company based down in Orange County. And uh, they've slowly been working together to, to uh, understand ways in which uh, they can use software or automation to. Uh, to make uh, mortgage originations uh, more efficient, and uh, and they're well on their way to uh, to driving down the cost of originating a mortgage. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, really an exciting company which we started to communicate as well with, and in fact, right. a number of those companies uh, that are in financing space and uh, disclosures. Uh, we're easier to work with and partner. As you know, we automate the entire transaction for the buyer and for the seller as well as the agent. Uh, so we, we really are so excited to have one of the uh, tech-driven uh, mortgage provider to introduce to our home buyers within the platform. And the goal is to make the transaction itself shorter so that we can achieve uh, double is decrease of the transaction period, as well as, of course, the consumer centric, very user friendly experience. The goal of here is to make the home buying process finally enjoyable. Like with Glide, we also would love to collaborate with them. Uh, once we have disclosures entirely filled in uh, digitally on their phones, uh, then why not to have them during the process on Proppy? And then in the end, when we do record the deed through Proppy, we actually put a QR code on the grant deed. Uh, and this allows to transfer the knowledge of the disclosures from one owner to the next one. Uh, so it, it's really fascinating space to be at and to work with these uh, amazing uh, entrepreneurs on how we can build this uh, process together. And here I'm uh, illustrating technology landscape, what to use for agents specifically. So obviously uh, the lead generation is a, is a huge, uh, huge uh, time spending for agents. And it's not anymore just Zillow. They have to be active in social media. There are a few companies there that were with us at Rich Program of NAR. Uh, CRM, also we're excited to work with CRM when we can uh, help agents to understand which leads got into the transaction itself so they can evaluate the source of this lead and the price. 
virtual staging, virtual tours that are just essential right now. And uh, we believe that will be the future. Transactions and offers, obviously, Propy. Uh, and then tech-driven lenders, uh, as we just discussed, Alone, Snap, Better. And then Michelle, uh, on our prep talk, you said that you're very uh, passionate about the new kind of, maybe it will evolve to a trend. What is happening post-transaction? So can you share a little bit more? What are your thoughts on the uh, post-transaction as well as if you have anything to add here to this landscape? Uh, this is a great landscape and, and very focused on the transaction. And I think in the past year or so, a lot of the interest and the focus, like you mentioned, is around making the real estate transaction frictionless. Uh, we're also very interested in what happens post-transaction. So what next? So the, now you own the most valuable asset you've ever purchased. Um, there's lots that comes with that uh, around maintenance, repairs, maybe you're gonna do a renovation. Uh, so we're, we're fascinated and we're still really interested in kind of after the transaction, maintaining that relationship. Uh, we see agents as a, a great starting point and a great facilitator of these types of ongoing relationships, but um, we're still, we're interested in the space and we're still trying to um, kind of meet more people there. Yeah, so one cool company is Rate, uh, my agent out of Australia and they're becoming more and more aggressive here in the US. Uh, so definitely a, a cool one. Nima, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I, uh, I put together a, a market map uh, a couple months ago on the residential real estate space. And I think the most striking thing to me was just how many technology companies are, are building in uh, uh, products for, for both agents and home buyers and all the different stakeholders in the process. Uh, and that can be overwhelming. And so one of the, one of the things we're looking at is how do, uh, is, is, will platforms emerge that, that uh, effectively aggregate a set of vendors uh, required to, to execute a transaction? I know that's, that's in a big way what, what you're working on uh, in, uh, in, at Proppy. And there are a few other, other companies that I think are interesting that, are, that have similar aspirations because you know, ultimately technology is, uh, is fantastic, but if you have to use a different tool for every step of the process, uh, you're going to run into the same inefficiencies uh, that we did in, uh, in the, you know, offline, more manual world. And so, uh, you know, I think we have to be conscientious of technology for technology's sake isn't enough. You know, it's, we need to be, we need to think about the full uh, transaction life, life cycle, all the people required to get a transaction done and, and make sure that they all coordinate effectively and that they aren't just living in a bunch of uh, silos. Yeah. I totally hear what you're saying and it's actually becoming a very increasing pain point for agents and broker owners. In the last two weeks, I think we had like probably three calls, discovery calls, where basically the pain was we're tired to log in in five, six different uh, tools just for the transaction. It's not lead generation, it's not virtual staging or post transaction, just for the transaction to execute it. They have to log in in DocuSign, they have to log in on transaction management platform, zip forms, disclosures tool, and uh, Google Drive to keep their documents in one place. So there's so, so many, and I'm uh, very excited to actually uh, have this mentality of being an open platform where we, where we can feed the critical parts of the, of the transaction in one platform. Um, so we will be wrapping up soon. So Fox, if you have any questions, please shoot them here um, in the chat uh, and we'll make sure we will ask them. I think we have one question in Q and A, let me double check. And before we get to the uh, questions, uh, let's uh, think about like one takeaway for the market participants from you, Nima, and you, Michelle. Um, as uh, as the we are going out from the co we're not yet uh, we're trying to reopen uh, with not a very great success, but still we see that our agents, our customers are having a lot of work, a lot of listings and uh, transactions. Um, so once we're starting to reopen. What are your uh, takeaways for the market participants? I would say 
that even as we reopen, I think still embracing the technology and the digital products that are out there to change the process, I think it will still, even though maybe you are able to uh, do some of these things in person again, I think digital solutions will still be around. So I think it may be around being flexible in your work, similar to how we see it going back to the office. I think there will be a hybrid going forward of how we interact and, and do open houses. So I think embracing these digital solutions it will be worth it longer term as well. Thank you. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and, and just to, to second that, uh, you know, I think uh, focusing on, uh, I, I, you know, COVID was a great accelerant of digital adoption. And I think it's important that we continue to see that post COVID. Um, and then, you know, I think, uh, you know, that we are entering a period of, you know, potentially uh, like a sustained economic downturn. And uh, that may have effects on the demand side of the equation in, in real estate. And, uh, you know, access to home ownership is something that's really important, uh, both to us as, a, as, as investors, and then, but then also just important at a macro level. And uh, so that's, you know, companies like Landed are, are doing a fantastic job enabling home ownership. And, and uh, you know, I think in the, in the same way uh, as agents, being aware of, of the set of, uh, I would guess the menu of, of financing options available for uh, for your clients is is uh, is going to be very important, and, and a lot of startups are working on that problem. Thank you, thank you, Nima. So we have one question here: What new technologies can help listing agents to get more listings here in Silicon Valley? Um, so what what we've observed uh, from our team is that. In the new age, during the pandemic, it's really important the listing to uh, to elaborate at least on three items during the listing appointments. Uh, it is to tell the consumer that you are ready to operate during the pandemic, uh, that you take all the measures, that you have uh, uh, this tax savvy approach on having virtual tours, on having offers with property entirely remotely delivered to the seller. I think if uh, you are able to articulate uh, your efficiency with technology during the pandemic, this will help you a lot. Um, Nima, Michelle, do you have anything to add? How agents can generate more listings? Uh, I'll just I'll just give a shout out to to one company in, in the technology uh, real estate technology space that I like called Ojo Labs and. Uh, but they've they, they just raised a, a, a large round uh, from a uh, financing and I, and you know what I like about them is that they uh, have a lead nurturing platform uh, for for agents and I think that's going to be uh, increasingly important because w I do think we'll see a swell in demand for 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 uh, for purchasing homes for all the reasons we described earlier uh, but folks will be in various stages of the buying process and so if you see an influx of leads uh, from a variety of sources. Uh, it's really important that, that you do a good job uh, uh, processing those leads and then and then keeping them engaged, even if they aren't ready to transact for you know six, nine, twelve months. And, and Ojo is a, is a great tool for doing that. Yeah, uh, Ojo, congrats on the raise. And also we have a few folks here from Movoto, which was acquired by Ojo. So nice. looking forward to see how this will evolve and. Uh, uh, folks here, congrats on that deal. And uh, Michelle, we have one more question. Uh, maybe you would uh, be able to cover it. Uh, I know you've been uh, communicating with a number of agents at Inman at the last conferences. Um, so with so many different tools and technology solutions out there, how do the different players in the real estate space evaluate which ones are truly value add? I think it's in this space, like we mentioned how network is so important. Uh, just referrals from other people in the space, I think is the most effective way to figure out what's, what's working and what's not working uh, for your peers. Uh, I'll give it a shout out to a company that I think uh, benefits the agent and that's called Homelight. So Homelight uh, provides leads, the selling, the sell side and the buy side, but I, uh, their platform is very focused and very agent friendly. So I think that that's one, but I, I really do believe it's, it's just from conversations because as Nima mentioned, there are a lot of solutions out there. So just trying to figure out what works and if something is working, it, it, it will figure it out quickly. 
Yeah, definitely. Thank you. I think that's a very valuable insight. Um, so we're wrapping up here. Uh, thank you everyone for being here. Um, I would say that the main takeaway for the market participants uh, is to really try the tools. To understand this value add, you really need to try. And very often the broker owner has to try it on its own before uh, introducing it to the agent. Also follow the PropTech trends and these awesome experts here, Nima and Michelle on LinkedIn and Twitter, uh, because we do not know how drastically technology in the pandemic will shrink or change the role of traditional uh, realtors and market participants in favor of automation. Uh, however, certain, uh, certainly many traditional service providers will not look the same way uh, as they look today. Tech empowered professionals will win the competition and will remain relevant uh, to the industry. So agents that learn tools and tech uh, even today during the pandemic have more business. We, we see that literally. So those of you here for sure will be the winners as they are learning about innovation before everyone else. So once again, thank you everyone uh, for being on our webinar. Uh, these are the webinar recordings from our previous sessions where we have uh, outstanding leaders, uh, one of the largest uh, brokerage uh, CEOs and founders as well as in many of those, we have demos of tools, how you can exactly use those tools like in one or two minutes so that we save your time. So keep learning and thank you so much, Nima and Michelle for sharing your knowledge with us today. Thank you. Thanks, Natalia. Thank you. Bye-bye everyone. Take care.